And now it's time for Tech Tuesday, featuring advice you want to hear from the man that has true passion for his job. Do you want it done right, or do you want it done right now? Other technicians can't wait to ask him a question. He's not your mom. He's the star of Tech Tuesday, Chuck Mass. Are you good? I'm always good. They can't. They can't see my rolling eyes behind the camera. <laughs> As I'm reminded, we are in a shop. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know. I'm tired, and the banging and the clanging just kind of distracts me a little bit. It's a little hard to go. So just a couple of guys hanging out with you guys, talking in the shop, talking Corvettes. Thanks for joining us. This is what we call Tech Tuesday. This is Chuck Metz. My name is Rick Conti. Welcome to our Corvette channel. Good to see you, dude. What's happening? Good to see you. Just living the dream, man. Living the dream. This is the calm before the storm, because we are about to get busy. You got a lot of PDIs coming in. You've about got to, to get busy. You've got to build a car project in my office. Uh, yeah. It's still in my office, by the way. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Did you watch Sunday show? Better your office than mine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you gotta, I'm looking, you don't have any room down here anyways. Uh, yeah, I watched cool. Sunday show. Yeah, that was nice for Ryan and I to have nice weather, 120 degrees. When you and I, when he and I went for the dealer trading, it was December. We're driving to the track, and as we pick up a rental car in Vegas, Chuck's like, uh, is that snow? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we're going up in elevation. By the time we got to Spring Mountain, it was raining and 50 degrees, and I just, it was... It was not the experience that you kind of saw on well, Sunday show. Yeah, I was uh, kind of taken back. Uh, I mean, we had to stay in a hotel. We didn't get to stay in the yeah, flat but, yeah, in the condos. They looked really nice. Yeah, they were. Ryan and I were there for two nights. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> uh, before we get into your questions for Tech Tuesday, uh, kind of pertaining to Sunday's video and what we're talking about, the Ron Fellows Performance Driving School, got an email here that comes from Johnny. He says, Rick, I just saw your video regarding motivating Corvette owners to attend the Ron Fellows Performance Driving School. 100% agree with everything Thing you said on Sunday show. Absolutely. I wanted to share some picks to encourage you and others to go. I was fortunate, listen to this, I was fortunate enough to experience dry, super windy, and then rainy conditions in February of 2023. This allowed me to feel more comfortable with the abilities of the C8 and the instructors are all top-notch instructors. Thank you, Spring Mountain. Rick, thanks for your channel. Again, this comes from Johnny. Ah, definitely. Like you said, it's bucket list. Oh, Even if you don't have a Corvette, go. How many times have I told you to go? You've heard me talk about it. We finally get to go. We unfortunately had those conditions yeah. uh, that we endured in December of 19. But you got, and we had kind of a rush compact course. Yeah. It wasn't the full two day course. We got a day and a half, and yeah, it, it, it was a lot. We were still standing there. Wait, don't don't go. We still have questions. It's like trying. <laughs> they to said shove. we'll get to them before the end of the class. Like, no, 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 come on, you got to go. Yeah. <laughs> we got the push broom. Five they said let me crap. let me show you. The door. Okay. <laughs> we were going. It, it was tough launch for C8, uh, but the staff, Spring Mountain, was doing what they were instructed to do from sure. Chevrolet at the time. But uh, now they've got a real good groove going on. Uh, they've got like 130 cars there for you wow. to choose from. And they talk about safety consciousness. I remember the first time, real quick, and this is going to be just a conversation in the shop with you guys. We'll get to your questions in a second. But the first time I went to Ron Fellows, I didn't really have, well, I had no tracking experience. I'd won a national sales contest and was driving the C6 ZR1 and the Z06s. That was freaking cool. I bet it was. I'm on track and they're monitoring what you're doing, not knowing that they're doing this. And they're checking my times. And I come back one time and he goes, hey, uh, your times are like going way down all of a sudden. Because it was hot, we went in July at the time, and they want to make sure that you're hydrated. And he goes, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm fine. So they're really checking on you, making sure that you're staying focused. And I said, well, you know, when I'm turning to the left, I feel like the driver's side rear is kind of kicking out. He says, stop what you're doing. Go get a different car. That's not what I want you thinking about. You need to be thinking about your line, everything that you're supposed to be doing as a driver in that car, plus listening to the instructors. And it was great. I got another car. That it, Lo and behold, that tire didn't need to be changed. And my times went back up. You know, I didn't know the protocol there. So sure. I felt so comfortable that they were looking out for me in that regard. I get so comfortable with their instruction that now that was really the whole, the last time, I've been there five times, the last time I went for the owner school that you guys saw on Sunday show, that's what really motivated me to start doing low speed cone, you know, autocross. I told Ryan, I said, hey, look at that, yeah, man, we could do that. Now, that's something else, what happened to Ryan at one of the track events, right? He got dehydrated. Dehydration is a real thing, guys. It really is. 
especially out in Nevada. You might be up in the mountains and it might be chilly, but it's still a dry, hot weather that you can, you get dehydrated before you know it. Yeah, be, and by the time you know it, it's too late. It's way too late. Yeah. So after every session, and mm -hmm. they give you a cup that when you're out there uh, to drink constantly, and I'm drinking it. constantly. And yeah. even my son said, he goes, Dad, with you and your diabetes, he goes, how come you're not crashing? It's like, man, you get in, there's snacks and all kinds of stuff, fruit and, and granola bars, and I'm drinking, there's Gatorade. Yep. Constantly, again, self-consciousness for yourself, but the staff is really looking out for you. Make sure you do that. Right. So I did the low speed, and then when I went to the, when I went to the big track, the big boy track, and I'm out there, it's so different. I'm sure. spoiled from the instruction at Spring Mountain. So when I first started going to pit race and some others I'm going to this year, then we'll share with you on the channel, I'm out there on track and I had so much nervous anxiety because I don't have anybody going, okay, Rick, go <laughs> third gear here, break here, turn here, uh -huh. do this. Nobody's right. walking me through it. It's, it's really a different mindset and it really screws your head up. I mean, you want to talk about your butt puckering, man, I'm a, but I'm comfortable now. I'm starting to get used to it, understanding and learning the tracks that you're on. That helps. But uh, yeah, it really is different, but it is fun. And I love sharing the track experiences because I'm really at the discovery stage for myself. So sharing it with a lot of people on the channel so they get an understanding that you can take the Corvette culture into yet another culture. Uh -huh. And this is fun for me to, to discover. Oh, yeah. It really is. Okay, I can talk to you guys all day long. Let's get on to a couple of questions. We've got, and I say this every week, but I'm telling you, last week, I was telling him before the show, uh, I sent the email address up on the screen on last week's show, and you guys sent in some great looking pictures. This is a car channel, this is a Corvette channel, and we're gonna show off your beautiful rides at the end of tonight's show. All right, Q&A, what you got, Chuck? All right, this one comes from Bill. It says, I've always enjoyed your shows. I have two questions. I have a 2017 Grand Sport with a Z07 package. The car has about 13,000 miles on it. Oh yeah, he bought this from us. Yeah, and, and, he, car, does, and he does tracking. Okay, yep, perfect. Well, he says the car's tracked once or twice per year. The first question has to do with the front brakes on the ceramic brakes. They've never gotten to the point where the sensor alerts they are worn. However, if you look at the pads, there's what I think are the rivets showing. I'm guessing that they are brass. Uh, they do not seem to hurt the rotors, but I changed the pads anyway to be safe. See the attached picture. I circled some of the rivets. Okay, these aren't rivets, and I'm sure you'll put this up. Yep. This is the metallic in the pads. For the people that take these ceramic cars out and, and drive them slow and gingerly, all of a sudden the, the brakes sound like a coat of buff yes. when you stop. It's because right. this metallic comes through the pad. This is actual metal inside the pad. The C7 and even the C8 with the ceramic brakes are performance brake pad made for the track, made for the heat. And that's the only way they won't squeal. But no, those aren't rotors. That's just, I mean, I see a pattern there. It looks like it could possibly be rivets, but the, the pads are just molded to the, to the metal part. They're not riveted. So that's just metallic in the pads that they're using to get a longer life out of the pad. Probably a good segue now that you're talking about that, and Bill sent in that question, is mm -hmm. uh, especially the ceramic brakes, not just all brakes, but when you're doing, and I know he does some real tracking. If you're gonna do some high-speed tracking, there's a percentage in the Chevrolet track prep guide. I'll put a PDF link down below in the description of tonight's video and what you got to do to burnish the brakes to get ready for the track. And it's one hell of a procedure, it really sure. is. So if you're gonna be really serious about it, I mean, you've got to read this thing step by step. I get worn out just reading it. It's like, I gotta do all this? Well, but that really, like you said, heats them up and gets them ready for the track. And same thing, what you're talking about, not only for the track, you get one of these, if I get one of these in for services or burnish procedure that I have to go through, right. same thing. Right. Because they are a high performance track brake pad. Now you may not remember this and just again we didn't get a chance this is a very impromptu show there's not a lot of prep believe me it's <laughs> here's this sit down here's the cameras on welcome all right and then we'll work it out. Sure. Uh, we'll edit it out if we don't want you to see something anyways <laughs> <laughs> moving on uh, hopefully this is still the conversation uh, going back to some of our original Tech Tuesdays we talked a lot about the ceramic brakes and the sensors that came on and I think something changed over the years where all of a sudden you didn't have to change all of the sensors and then they actually change it where you can change one specific sensor no, no, no. The the, the brake warm sensor on these cars are like Christmas, a set of Christmas tree lights. When one blows or one goes bad, you can't tell which one's bad. 
Okay. The, the GM don't break it out specified. It says one trouble code for brakes worn low. Don't make me dig up the whole video. Well, you can dig up I'll all you want. I know. Anyways, okay. <laughs> used to when they first come out, you couldn't get the sensors without right. the brake pads. That's cool. Just want to be clear about that. Now you can buy just the sensors. You remember I was talking about that, oh, yeah. right? Okay. Uh huh. Right. But it's they have no breakout of your left front brakes wore, your right rear okay. brakes wore, just brakes wore. Something and, changed. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't know what. Well, that what was. changed was, just, was originally you couldn't get them without them. You had to buy the brake pads with the sensors okay that's what it was then See, they all right. then they done away you could just buy the sensors I'm not totally whacked no <laughs> I'm whacked <laughs> just not totally all right but, uh, uh, part of his question oh, has got to, got to do with his <laughs> rear mag shocks they have oh. a very slow leak of the black magnetic fluid see the attached picture uh, at what point do these need to be replaced I've done uh, not a lot, but I've done some of these on the C7s. Uh, when it gets to, I mean, once it starts leaking, there's nothing you can do about it other than replace it. Uh, I've had some of these guys come in and they don't even realize it. But when I go to test drive their car, it feels like it's a real rough ride. And it's because all the fluids leaked out of the magnetic shocks and there's right. no more fluid. So it's just a hard ride. Uh, is there a point that you should replace them? I would say as soon as they start leaking, but it's up to you. I'm from Kevin. It says, I have a 2005 Victory Red convertible. I have had a couple issues with the computer on it. I'm looking for this part number, which is a body control module. It won't run without this part or my mechanic can't find it. Help. I'm sorry. There is no help. I've got a customer right now that I, his car was here for eight months waiting on a body control module, and it was a, an 05. And he finally just come and got it and took it back home. I told him when, when and if we ever find one, he's the first one on the list, but I can't find it either. The, the parts don't no longer exist. I don't know if there, there might be some places out there possibly rebuilding them. But if the part don't exist, I don't know that the parts to rebuild them exist. Right. So that's a problem we're running into with C5 Corvettes and C6 Corvettes. Absolutely. And it's unfortunate to think, I guess it makes it realize and kind of scares us that time does move a little bit faster. Sure. He's like, those cars are, how, much, how old are those cars? Oh my gosh. Yeah. And you guys will send in messages, hey, can Chuck look, check on this? And Chuck, Chuck doesn't check parts. I want to thank John in our parts department <laughs> actually did the research on that. Right. You know, he gets the parts too, Chuck, and then Chuck puts them together for you. Uh, but that part, as Chuck just mentioned, is discontinued. It's not anywhere available, so you can't no. order it. And I've got a customer waiting on one. And he's got a customer waiting on one. So getting them rebuilt is a possibility. But the last time, the last time you actually had one rebuilt, it took six months to get it back from the guy. Yeah. Because we sent it to the guy. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's difficult. So thanks for. Uh, for watching and thanks for the question and I really wish you luck. It's unfortunate. That's yeah, it is unfortunate. That's that's the era that we're in. There's new companies popping up that are doing chips and stuff like that. There's got to be somebody that can take this. There's got to be an untapped business potential there. Well, the problem, especially with these 05s, and you know them, was the only way to shut the car down it had to be in reverse. Yes. Which part of that manual, went through manual the body cars control own. body? Yeah. Yeah. And manual, that's manual. part of the big problem of not being able to find them. Yeah. Because yeah. 05 was a year all unto itself because of that, yeah. especially the stick card. It was. <laughs> uh, Tech Tuesday continues. Rick and Chuck, this comes from George. Rick and Chuck, thanks for all the great information. I've got a 70th anniversary hardtop convertible with summer tires, so it's a Z51 car. Is it true about not driving them in certain temperatures? I live in Missouri and the weather changes constantly. Uh, in fact, filming today, it was 70 some degrees yesterday. Today, we just saw sleet. I mean, what is up with this weather? But you know what, though? Tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but well, we're airing on Tuesday. I apologize. We're filming on Monday, and I just did what I told you not to do. <laughs> it never, it is Tuesday. Uh, Okay. So tomorrow, <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> Wednesday at the National Corvette Museum, baby boy, it's going to be 77 when Ryan and I and my customer Michael from Florida are uh, we're driving the Z06 on the NCM Motorsports uh, part track. So, yes, uh, anyways, uh, as far as your Z51 tires, what they talk about is under 40 degrees. They've changed the composition in those tires, so they handle a lot better than they did in, in C7. Uh, so you're not going to get as much. You'll still get some. You're not going to get as much as those those tire skips, those tire chops, if you will. But if you're driving them aggressively or frequently under 40 degrees, that's when you have to worry. 
You're, if it's 40 degrees, if it's 30 degrees, if it's 25 degrees and you're leaving here in Columbus and you're going to drive down to Bowling Green, Kentucky, go ahead. But you're going to take it a little bit easier because the tires are going to be harder. They're going to be a little bit more slippery. So just be careful. I'm actually changing out my Z51 tires to all season tires. I just like the way those feel. I'm going to use the Z51s for low speed autocross and things like that. Some more on that in a future video. But yeah, that's a, that's a good question. It could be 80 degrees. You guys know if you had C7 uh, and even in your C8 with your Z51 tires, 80 degrees and your car's inside the garage. Well, guess what? It's cool in the garage and the concrete's cool. So you're pulling it out so it's cool air, cool concrete, or just you know cool temperatures in the air. And as you turn that wheel at slow speeds only, that's when you get some of that, da, 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 da. you know, we forget to tell people that when they're buying the UC7. Like, hey, man, there's something going on with my car. It's like, oh, dude, sorry, I forgot to tell you that. You know, we do that all the time with the new ones, but it's easy to forget. So below 40, frequent or aggressive driving is your concern with those summer tires. Thanks for watching. Funny, when Nate first started helping me, the first oh, yeah. C7 he pulled out, it was cold yeah. and started making a turn. He parked it, got out, said, dude, there's something bad wrong with that car. <laughs> oh, what's it going? He, well, I turned it, man, the front end jumping everywhere. <laughs> Normal, this right, and tires. Yeah. <laughs> Performance car, yeah. <laughs> Performance tires. That's right. Oh, see now, I, we, uh, you got to pause. I got to go get my prop. You got a prop? Yeah. Oh, I told you to get. Okay, I, know I know you told me for. to get it. Every time we talk about this, we, we get don't, another thing. We don't have it every time. Sometimes we show it and then you miss it in the video that we don't show it and then the questions just pour in. Yeah. Uh, last time we were talking about some of the maintenance and stuff I was doing on my 21 before I sold it to Pete in Corpus Christi, Texas. So uh, go ahead, sir. Right. This one comes from Mike. My question is back in 2020 or maybe early 21, you, Rick, had mustache at the time. Yes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you were informing the owners of the HTC about the electrostatic type of sealer that needs to be used that keeps the seals, seals from drying out. Okay. It's, it's a dielectric grease. You keep talking. Well, I was going to read the part number to them oh, okay. in case they can't make it out. I'm, on I'm that. sorry, I, please. But <laughs> it's an AC Delco 12377900. Okay. If you look, this is a clear dielectric grease that's used a lot in General Motors for their electrical connection. And the reason they use this grease is because it's waterproof yes. for their electrical connections. That's why I like using it on the weather strips. And like I said, this is like drywall mud. Less is more. Yes. The more you put on, the more you got to wipe off. So just a thin film over the weather strips. Let it set 10, 15 minutes. Go back over, wipe the excess off, and you're good to go. Fantastic. Thanks, so. thanks for showing that. I appreciate yep. that. Thanks for asking. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, this is the time of the year that we have to do that stuff. And that's stuff that I would recommend doing at least once a year on sure. all your rubber seal contact moldings. And I wouldn't forget for you guys that have uh, convertibles and have coupes, get your hatch storage areas, too. It's not just around the windows and right. the roof. Okay. Well, yeah. If your car's never seen rain, snow, sleet, rain, any kind of weather, if you just drive it on an everyday basis, one with a removable top, and you take that top out, you can see the dust and the dirt line oh, heck yeah. from where it's just picking up stuff out of the air. All right, engine appearance lighting package. Wow, haven't talked about that in a while for C8 Corvette. It's simply not been available. It's actually starting to be available now for new orders. Uh, Dean sends in a question because he's got a C8 that didn't get that. Rick, I got a 2023 C8, and as you know, the engine, as we just mentioned, the engine appearance package was on constraint forever. I was able to find some carbon fiber trim panels, and there's some great access panels to kind of color coat and match your car. Those are pretty cool. My question concerns me with the lights and the wiring harness. Can you buy those through GM and install them? Uh, the order, of course, wasn't on my car. Well, I did some research, and I actually, and again, thanks to our parts guy, John, I found the wiring harness. I'm gonna show you some pictures here in a second, and I got the light part number. Remember, there's two lights in there, so here's the part numbers, and a couple quick pictures, and we'll be back and ask Chuck if you actually can just add these to the existing car. All right, so no yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that to you. I just, yeah, I don't know if these require a module or what have you. Uh, it didn't look like it needed anything fancy. There's a chance that they, we've talked about this for a while, that they could just get this wiring. It looks like a lot of work uh, to put these lights in and the wiring harness. If you can get to all this crap and right. put that in, then God bless you to get those lights that well, really should have been on the car from the start. Sure. Regardless of the package, there has to be a in. wiring harness inside the car though for that to plug into. Correct. So, so yeah, until you tear it apart, you won't know. So right. 
at least we answered the question, did a little uh, little R&D for you. Thank you sure. again to our parts guy uh, that got us that, that information, that graph, as well as those part numbers. Uh, rest is on you. If you actually get that installed, though, let me know. I'd be kind of curious. Sure. Yeah, thanks again for watching. All right, this one comes from Brian. It says, very quick question. When you use the floor jack on the jacking pucks, where do you put, the, where do the jack stands go? Oh, where do the jack stands go? <sighs> I, uh, that's a tough one. It is, I, it is, it is a, there's a delicate area underneath that car. Uh, yeah, there's a very delicate area. I, I know on the C7s, we have a drive-on rack. I haven't had a C8 up on it yet, but when I raise the C7s up, I lift them actually from the control arms with, so, of course, if you've got a Z51, it has the plastic trim panels covering the control arms, right. so you'd have to be careful with that. Uh, you know, I'm not real sure. Because even where the jacking pucks go, and that's why I love getting the pucks from Paragon and ACS Composite, because for me, I'm underneath there and I know exactly where to jack the car up, but just adjacent to that, isn't there a spot in that frame that you could still put a jack stand and you're still kind of on the frame? It's well, yeah, so we I don't mean, have a graphic to show it, you. But it's, the frame runs the whole length of the side of the car. Right. You just have you know to be... You that triangle point there. Right. You just have to be careful with what jack stand you're using that it don't slide off. Depends how much work you're doing underneath there. Sometimes they got those those drive-on racks, you know, yeah, race ramps, and ramps. Stuff. You just drive up and they're up in the air already and do what right. you need to do. That might be a nice, safer idea. And those are light, they're not real heavy. Right. So, I don't know, just a couple of ideas. But yeah, sure. that's what we like to talk about is, you know, you guys owning your car, stuff that's going on with the car, stuff you'd like to do with the car, you'd like to show off your car. We got some rides coming up here in a second. A couple quick uh, emails that kind of pertain to the ride segment. Uh, this comes from Tony to uh, Rick and Chuck. Look forward to seeing you guys at Corvettes at Carlisle this year. I don't know if we're going to be able to make I would love for us to go and do that, <laughs> right. I, I, I tell you. Once again, I have to say, you've changed the attitudes, thoughts, and feelings for the better. Both you and Father Chuck do a hell of a job <laughs> educating and entertaining us. I know it takes a toll, but we really do appreciate the efforts. Tony, thank you for those uh, yep. sentiments. We really do appreciate that more Absolutely. than you know. You've also hypnotized us without even knowing it. Every time you play that song at the end of your beautiful ride segment, <laughs> I get this feeling of happiness. My wife agrees it's a fantastic way to celebrate and share the Corvette feeling with everyone. Thanks again, Rick and Chuck, for all that you do. Yeah, thanks. I love playing that song. We had some people that said, you know, hey, I want to change the song up. No, that's that's a staple house, man. Yeah. And it's it is a feel-good song. Absolutely. You know, and depending on the mood that you're in some days, you might even you might even shed a little tear if you start thinking about some stuff, you know? Some sure. of the pictures that we share with you guys. Again, I've got some good ones for you. Don't go anywhere. Fun conversation, real conversation that we enjoy having with you tonight. Uh, here's another one pertaining to beautiful rides. This is uh, Rick and Chuck. Been watching the channel for about three years now and you've inspired me to get on the track. In March, my wife Kathy and I took our 16 Z51 down to the NCM Motorsports Park. I raced their C8 on Monday and my wife riding shotgun with one of the instructors. We drove ours on Tuesday. Uh, then we took the tour of the museum, did the Stingray Grill. Isn't that burger awesome? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then we did, you gotta taste that. You like burger, I'm telling you what brother, probably the best burger you ever have. And then we did the Corvette plant tour. What an experience for both of us. Now she's ready to drive on the track on our very next trip. Great people out there and without you Rick promoting Corvette like you do, we never would have made that trip. Thank you again to Marty and Kathy from Ohio. Thank you so much for watching, yeah. guys. Let's show off some of these great looking cars now, Chuck. Oh, absolutely. What are these? What are these people going to look at right now? These are your beautiful rides. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week, we hope. See ya. <laughs>
lover It is within each other to forgive and make amends If I am known then, or what I know now I wouldn't have said what I said I took the long road, thought I'd be better on my own Sometimes what's right is wrong instead Cause I And I didn't understand that you 